FCC debut from Birmingham. Both these guys look in incredible shape here. Scott hit. Oh, Scott takes a right hand there. Stocks man the cage. Closes it up. Now he's looking for that body lock. Perhaps going for a takedown here is Scott Hancock. Yeah, Scott was looking to uh, to force it from the start, wasn't he? Looking to press him on the stand up. Now looking to press him up and take him to the ground. Good takedown defence here from Darren Higgins. Come all the way from Birmingham for this fight. Yeah, you can see Scott Hancock's the more local fight. He's got a lot of support in here tonight. You can see Darren Higgins' muscles flex from here, can't you? Really, really putting up a hell of a resistance against a takedown attempt. Desperately trying to turn his man on the cage is Darren Higgins. Scott Hancock, though, proving to be resilient. Very, very powerful in the clinch. He's got those double underhooks. He's going to have to do something here, though. The referee might look to separate this position. You've got to always be looking to advance positions. If it's a stalemate, the referee's going to split the fighters and start these two facing each other. Yeah, Paul Crossley looking at this was, uh, you know, taking a view from the other side. You're going to see both fighters work. I mean, they are they are shifting. It's difficult from this position. A lot of energy is used up. Like we staunch, said before. staunch takedown defence there from Higgins, and he finally manages to turn his man in the cage. Let's see what Darren Higgins can do in a dominant position against the cage now. Yeah, Scott Hansen's got that arm trapped though, which uh, which is a good good position. It allows him to really fight off any any deep hooks. And they're fighting with some nice knees as well. It's all even Stevens in the clinch here so far between Scott Hancock and Darren Higgins. Yeah, real tight clinching. Hancock's trying to throw that knee up high on that occasion, didn't quite land it. Yeah, he's also trying to spring that leg round looking for a takedown, but um, Darren Higgins is strong in his feet, you know, he's not going to be easy to put onto the map. I'm surprised the referee Paul Cross is like this one as go as long as he has in the clinch. Yeah, I, yeah well, I mean, these guys are working hard, but there really hasn't been any advance in good positions there. Now Scott Hancock's advances, he, he makes the turn. Can he get a takedown from this position though, or can he break away and land some strikes? Yeah, Sharp good. knees to the body there from Hancock. Yeah, and a roll again. Darren Higgins pushes off, and there we go. Paul Crossy finally separates the fighters. Now let's see what these guys can do at range. Hancock fires a head kick and a left jab behind it. Both obviously equally matched in strength. Higgins so though firing a big right hand. And they clinch up again. Back onto cage side. When you're clinching the, against the cage like this, it's all about who can get the head lower. The lower your head is, the more dominant position you've got, the more leverage you can get against your man on the cage. Yeah, and both fighters are quite patient. What you don't want to do is try, try and overwork. You've got to wait for the right position at the right time to get the takedown. Otherwise, you're just going to spend energy on, on a lost cause. Looks like this round is going to end the same way it started with both men tied up in the clinch against the cage. I mean, neither man really got the upper hand there for me, but in terms of the amount of time that a fighter had control against the cage, I've got to give that round to Darren Higgins. He did land a nice right hand when the guys were separated as well. So for me, that first round, 10-9 Darren Higgins, but not a whole lot of action there, Jez. No, not at all. I mean, uh, that's a close call as well. I mean, I think I'll, I'll go with you on that one, da um, Brad. Uh, Darren Higgins just sneaks it uh, just to just to, to control uh, against Cage but uh, not much separates him and in all fairness we've not actually seen a hell of a lot from either fighter at this point in time neither one have demonstrated a, a lot on their feet or, or and we've, we've not even seen it go to the ground so all to play for in the next few rounds absolutely Jez and you know the, these fighters have got to be thinking now is, is it worth going to that clinch again where you've been stuck in such a stalemate or is it worth backing off is it worth using some more movement or perhaps maybe shooting for a takedown from range uh, sometimes you just don't have a choice it just ends up in gridlock doesn't it uh, I think uh, I know Ben's going to present himself the further we go on uh, you know it's just going to see who, which, which of the fighters can capitalise first well Paul Crosley starts the second round and Scott Hancock comes out very aggressive flying knee and a high kick Referee and Paul there's been Crosley. a start I believe there was an inadvertent low blow there Paul Crosley stopped the action Darren Higgins didn't seem to feel it until after the referee stopped the action. No, uh, Scott Hancock came out there, all guns blazing, puts his hand up, you know, obviously not intentional, it's a part of MMA, but uh, yeah, Higgins is down at the moment, feeling that. Uh, well, we didn't see it, maybe referee Paul Crossley did. He's an experienced official, I'm sure he got a good angle on that, probably a better angle than we've got here at cage side. Yeah, and Darren Higgins has got plenty of time, he needs to make sure that he's ready to get on with this fight. There's no, there's no pressure on him. Sometimes fighters feel the pressure from the crowd, get up too early and, uh, and end up losing a fight. So, you know, 
advice if you can hear us now is just take your time when yeah. you're ready stand up and then you know go for it get on with it in my mind if you take a, a low blow to the groin it's an illegal shot intentional or not if you've got five minutes take five minutes and recover take all the time you need take all the time you have yeah because at the end of the day all that people remember is that final scorecard exactly yeah paul crossley here is one he's got hancock's against repeated blows to the groin hancock's adamant that he didn't hit the groin um, you know, it's the referee's decision at the end of the day. I'm, I'm sure the instant replay will shed a bit more light on this one. But it looks like we're about to get back on the way for the second round here. Scott Hancock versus Darren Higgins here at full contact, 10 to 3. Again, a, a confident start with, with some nice kicks there from, uh, from Scott Hancock. Yeah, really throwing those kicks, isn't he? He looks confident on his feet. Perhaps trying to throw his man off more than he is trying to finish the fight with one of those kicks. Yeah. And there's, there's a double leg. There's a double leg. He gets his man against the cage. And that's Can't a... quite seem to get him off balance, though. He, he's going for the inside leg trip there with a the body lock. Do you know, all credit due there to Darren Higgins, because that was a really, really good take down the fence. He's got Hancock's came in there, and he, he, got, he got some good handles. I thought he was going to pick him up and dump it in his back, but great resistance there from Higgins. And now it's Higgins with his man against the cage. He's got the switch, and he's going for a double leg. Some hammer fists. Some big shots there from Scott Wilcox, but he gets taken down. Boom, slam, great take down. That was a nice work there from Darren Higgins. He's now going to try and cement his position here. Tries to take his back, but he ends up with his man against the cage again. And Scott Hancock stands using his back there against the cage. Yeah. Wall walks up and he's jumped into a guillotine choke. This looks very tight here from Scott Hancock. Does he have it in? It looks to be a tight guillotine choke from this position. Is he going to get the submission here in the second round? He's putting everything into this guillotine. Absolutely everything. Darren Higgins trying he, to hold on for dear life. He's he trying to, to push his hips out. up. He's got this in very, very tight. Darren Higgins holding on. And he breaks free. Great work from wow. Darren Higgins. What an awesome resistance there. That's, that's got to hurt. That's really got to suck the air out of him. But great resistance from Darren Higgins to it survive that. It wasn't so that. much technical takedown defense as it was pure force of will with that one. Yeah, absolutely gut and mind to get through that. Now, what can Darren Higgins do from his top position? Well, not enough. The bout's been restarted on the feet yeah. by referee Paul Crossley. Puts him back up, but uh, a great exchange on the floor. Uh, Hancock shaking his arms out there. You know that guillotine's got to bend his arms out. Lactic acid build up from tensing those muscles for so long. Is this going to affect his stand-up game? His hands are low. Charges into the cage there. I was wondering. Nice Hancock's with a nice combination. I just had to check my tie. I thought I had a red tie on there from there for a second. Scott Hancock's come running into the cage at me. But he's eager to get on with this fight, eager to, eager to cement his position in the second round. Higgins now with his man up against the cage. He's got those hands clinched behind his legs. He's looking to pull those hips out yeah, but get I, a nice double leg takedown. He's in a good position, but I just don't think he's got the energy. I think that guillotine really starved the oxygen. I think what he wants to do from this point is actually get into the third round and get a bit of a, a respite to recover. Those lungs are going to be burning. He's trying to hoist him. <laughs> Scott Hancock's cheekily grabbing the cage there to prevent that takedown at the end. Yeah, I'm glad you saw that too. I think uh, all but for the quick, uh, quick outreach onto the cage, that would have been a big slam. But. Uh, well, Darren Higgins corner just complained to the referee at the end of that round it was the third time he grabbed the cage and our referee Paul Crossley now warning the corner of Scott Hancock's against grabbing that cage for another time you know what's going to come really into this final round here is uh, is the fitness the endurance of both fighters both have worked really hard from 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 the feet onto the ground up against the cage as we said earlier you know both fighters will spend a lot of energy trying to work and get a dominant position Jez, how have you got this fight going into the third and final round? Oh, you would have to ask me that, wouldn't you? <laughs> I would. It's my job. Um, I think I think it's got to go to Scott Hancock's really now. I think that second round was uh, just 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 took it. Um, so he, I think he's in he's in control entering this third. Obviously won a piece, but um, you know he's in a strong position now. Let's see if he can follow through and uh, and finish this fight up. Well, we're ready. We're about ready for the third round here. At full contact contender three. Scott Hancock's versus Darren Higgins. I'm Brad 48 Warren here with INJS Cook at the commentary position. Third round, let's get it on. Yeah. Referee's getting the towel out of the ring there. And we're off in the third round here. Scott Hancock's Darren Higgins. 
It's been a closely contested affair just thus far. Hancock's throwing a nice body kick out there. We've seen him use that earlier in the fight. Yeah. Trying to use it again in this third round, perhaps to set up a big right hand. He's throwing a lot of these kicks up. Not a lot of them are connecting, though. No, but both fighters looking lively on their feet, just trying to find that range with the kicks. You've got to wonder, you know, when, when there's not that much to separate two guys, is the guy who looks more active going to get the, the judges' scores at the end of the fight? Yeah, you've got to be, though, don't you? I mean, if you're, if, if you're in the hearts and the minds of the judges, that's where the fight's going to be won, isn't it? So, you know, you, you need to be throwing things, you need to be pushing, you need to be pressing. Get yourself, get yourself ingrained in the judges', judges mind to put it down on scorecards. But a very close fight here. Um, Higgins has done well. He's come out, you know, I think he, think he really needed that rest. Um, but he's still got a, a lot of time in his hands and he needs to, needs to control this now. He needs to try and take this because he's got Hancock. So I think uh, he's comfortable at the moment. He's happy. Well, Higgins came out with a nice combination there after the break. But he, he needs to be more active. He needs to push this now. And he is doing, throwing a nice lead left hook, right hand follow. Starting with the right hand and a nice knee up the middle there. Just missed there from Darren Higgins. And he's got his man in the cage where this fight has been contested in its majority. Yeah, some great little momentum there. Uh, a double combo, follow through is a big knee. Almost caught him square on the chin. He's got Hancock just shifting left. Otherwise, if that landed, who knows? But uh, yeah, onto the cage. And he's now. got that standing guillotine again. He's got Hancock's. I got it since then, I think. It's very, very tight. Does he have it imperfectly? We can't really see from this position. It's very, very close. No, he He's not got it. No, Darren Higgins just pushed the arm back, releases the pressure, opens up, can take a deep breath and start forcing, forcing his, his body onto, uh, onto Darren Higgins, trying to get some pressure, trying to find a little bit of space to try and get a takedown, because that's what he needs right now. He needs to get this to the ground and he needs to look at some submissions. Crowd here at full contact, contender three, getting restless, uh, and maybe rightfully so. A, a lot of this fight's been stalemate so far. Another whole lot of action here between Scott Hancock and Darren Higgins. No. All that goes to show, though, is these are two very evenly matched fighters. Yeah, it, it really does. I can understand the frustration of some of the crowd, but at the end of the day, both fighters showing a solid level of experience and, uh, and skill, you know, neither really willing to throw too much. You know, they're very close, not much space, and um, yeah, very closely contested fight so far. Knees on the inside there from Hancock's not really doing any damage, scoring points, so he's really trying for that standing guillotine choke. Again, he's got it in tight. Really, really tight now. How, how can he have this much strength left at the end of the fight? He is giving Higgins is hanging on, though. He's hanging on for dear life. I don't think he's going to get it. I think he's going to go to the judges, and it does. He's got Hancock screaming out there, giving absolutely everything to that guillotine, but uh, it's not enough. Once again, Darren Higgins demonstrates some great resilience, some great resistance. Both men throw their hands up, think they've done enough to earn the victory. We'll, well see. It was a great display of testicular fortitude there from Darren Higgins, but for me, Scott Hancock takes this fight pretty clearly on the judges' scorecards. Yeah, I think, I think so. Uh, yeah, it's not much to, to, to really uh, separate them, but enough, I think, that what Scott Hancock's done to, to take the victory. But... Uh, We'll soon see as it goes to safe for the, for the final result. Thank you. 